Field circuit at Sebring for their first glimpse of the FIA GT cars in action. This famous old track has seen some epic battles down the years, but many of the teams are worried about the safety of this very bumpy 3.6 mile circuit. Britain's Julian Bailey is giving the list a stall its first run in the series. He's qualified an impressive 16th, just behind the Gulf McLarens, Anders Olofsson and Jeff Lees, the best of that team, in ninth. But once again, it's the remarkable J.J. Leto in the BMW McLaren who set the fastest time, despite this spin. After their win at the last race at Mugello in Italy, the championship leaders are now well-placed to keep their Mercedes rivals at bay. But J.J.'s teammate Steve Soper is in a realistic mood. We seem to be quite competitive here, but I'm the uh, pessimist, not the optimist, so talk to me after the race. Lining up alongside Steve and JJ as their rival for the driver's title, Bernd Schneider, who knows he's got a fight on his hands. It will be very hard and uh, we have to beat the BMW here, otherwise we're losing the championship and that means it's quite a lot of pressure on our shoulders, but uh, we will do our best for sure. IndyCar star Greg Moore gets his first taste of sports cars in the third Mercedes, starting fifth. On the racetrack, I, I drove a, a NASCAR for about six hours at Rockingham, but uh, other than that, this is the only race car I've ever driven that has a roof over it, and it's, uh, it takes a little while to, to get used to it, but once you've gotten used to it, it's just another car. It's got four wheels and a uh, you know, steering wheel and three pedals, so you just got to go out and do your job. Paynos have had an encouraging qualifying. Andy Wallace and Olivier Griard start 10th, and Perry McCarthy and David Brabham 12th in Dave Price's team, while the French Dams car is 8th on the grid, although they've had their fair share of dramas in practice. Despite this fire, all three cars will make it to the start. With their front-engined American V8 layout, the Paynos cars have become the darling of the crowd here at Sebring. In the GT2 class, the Areca Dodge Viper team are also on home soil, with the number 51 car of Beretta and Gash out qualifying American Tommy Archer and Britain's Justin Bell in the 52 car. But they're up against the Porsche of Bruno Eichmann and Claudia Hertgen, who hold a slender one-point lead in the driver's title. There's Claudia Hertgen getting ready in the cockpit. And as we go into the penultimate round, as we get ready for the start of this three-hour race, just to throw the cat among the pigeons, sunny Florida has decided to become damp and overcast. 37 cars on the grid then. That's the Anders Olofsson Gulf McLaren BMW, ninth in the lineup. But at the front, on pole position, the Steve Soper JJ Leto championship leading McLaren with Steve Soper for the first time this season taking the start rather than JJ Leto. And alongside him, he's got the man who is challenging him for that championship lead, Bernd Schneider, the team leader of the Silver Arrows, these mighty V12 Mercedes. So McLaren and Mercedes on the front row, Yannick Dalmas's Porsche and Alessandra Nanini's Mercedes on row two. In row three, Greg Moore, the Canadian newcomer to sports car racing in the Mercedes and Cox in the Cox Revaglia McLaren, the teammate of Sofa and JJ later. They're coming now onto the home straight. Wait for the green flag and then the race will be on. There's the green flag. The race is underway and it's the Mercedes that's easing ahead. It's Schneider who takes the lead. The uh, Nanini Mercedes almost getting into second place, but Steve Soper has taken second place. Oh, and they're colliding at the first corner. They've touched. Somebody's gone off. I think it's the Mercedes that is off. In fact, also off is the Soper McLaren. One of the uh, Porsches went off as well, but there is the Schneider Mercedes well down the field. We didn't see it in the pictures, but I could see it from here that it looked like a collision of some sort between the leading Mercedes of Schneider, the second place McLaren of Steve Soper. Hans Schnuck was delayed as well, got onto the grass, and it's Nanini who leads. Alessandra Nanini is our leader. Yannick Dalmas is in second place. Peter Cox is third. Greg Moore is in fourth place. And Steve Soper and Bernd Schneider have both restarted. We're going to see a replay. There is the McLaren hitting the back of the Mercedes. The Mercedes spins. We're riding now with Hans Stuck, and we're riding on the grass. All three cars get on the grass. And here's another picture now of Julian Bailey in the Lister Storm, and 
watch that Mercedes elbowing its way back up past John Griezley's Porsche, well down the field for Bern Schneider. This is a real uh, blow for him at the start, but his car seems to be okay, as does Steve Sopers. The race goes on, Mercedes lead, but it's the car of Alessandro Danini that leads from the Porsche of Dalmas, and there is the Dalmas Porsche following the Mercedes. You always have to look with these Mercedes at the color of the mirrors, and it's the silver Mercedes with blue mirrors that leads. That's the Alessandro Nanini car, and the championship challenger in the Mercedes team, which is the Mercedes with yellow mirrors. That's Bert Schneider's car, of course. He is well down, I think, in about 12th place. I make Steve Soper about ninth at this point, but it's a long race. This is Claudia Hertgen now. And going past her, the Olivier Beretta Viper, these two cars, remember, are one point apart in the GT2 championship, and that's just as important as the GT1. Claudia Hertgen nudging in behind the Olivier Beretta Viper, that great big eight-litre V10 American car the much more nimble little Porsche working away over the bumps and bumpy it is here at Sebring. Now, back at the front Mercedes leads Porsche Alessandro Danini locking up a wheel there as he turns into that tight right-hander across the change of surface. Meanwhile the Listers in the pits I think Julian Bailey ran off the circuit at some point. Apparently, there was contact with another car. And now in is the Hans Stuck Porsche. It went off in that uh, schmozzle at the beginning on the first corner. But Stuck has also been penalised because apparently he started overtaking cars in the rolling start before the green flag was waving. They've given him a penalty. So he's had a really disastrous start to this race. Mercedes won. Porsche 2, McLaren 3, a disastrous start for Steve Soper, a disastrous start for Bernd Schneider, and I'm sure they're going to be arguing afterwards about exactly what happened on that first corner, but it was Schneider who spun, it was Soper who was delayed, and they're both well down the circuit, well down the order, although they're working their way up. Anders Olofsson there, letting Steve Soper by. They're both in McLarens in different teams, but Anders Olofsson isn't going to hold Soper up. Soper is carving his way back up the field, and so indeed is Bernd Schneider, who's absolutely flying. There's the leading trio. That's McLaren with its headlights on. That is Steve Sofa's teammate with uh, the Dutchman Peter Cox at the wheel, sharing with the Italian Roberto Ravaglia. One, two, three, Mercedes, Porsche, and McLaren. And there's a very, very long way to go. The road absolutely dry now. There's one of the little GT2 Porsches, which is in trouble already. But that three-car battle at the front, it's the number two Mercedes, the number two Porsche, and the number two McLaren in those three teams because they're three number one cars, all delayed in that first corner incident. That's Uwe Altsen in his Rook Racing uh, GT2 Porsche. But now the leaders are already lapping some of the slower cars. That's the core Euser Marcos. And Steve Soper's up to fifth. Bernd Schneider is up to sixth, they're running close together, and they're now on the tail of the third entered Mercedes. That's Greg Moore's car in fourth place. There's Greg Moore with the red mirrors, and the McLaren's on the inside, the McLaren spins. Greg Moore shut the door on him, and Bernd Schneider manages to miss the spinning McLaren, which keeps going. Little wriggle from the tail as a furious Steve Soper gets the power back on, but that will have dropped him further down the order once more. Greg Moore quite clearly shutting the door on him. We ride now in the Chris Gleason Viper, entered by Hugh Chamberlain, the British team. This car to slightly earlier specification to the white Vipers, which are run by the Eureka team. He's waving somebody by on his right. Uh, who comes through? It's one of the GT2 Porsches sneaking through. The BMW team, the Schnitzer pit crew waiting for a stop. There's JJ Later watching the race and obviously wishing he could be in there. Now, Steve Soper in the pits. There's damage to the front of the car. They've got the tyres ready, the fuel going in. The fuel has to be done first. Then they do the tyres. They're not allowed to do them at the same time. They're taping up the front of the car. Get a move on, says JJ Leto. That's Thomas Bashir bringing his McLaren in. He's got his windscreen wiper going. Is it starting to rain? We can't see it from here. But Bashir comes in and they can't get that McLaren going. Another delay for Steve Soper. And now they've wheeled it back. They've put it up on the jacks again. They couldn't get it started. And they're putting wet weather tires on. They've had a dramatic change of strategy. It is now starting to rain and they've taken off 
these slick tyres, they put on the wet weather tyres, they've got the car going, Steve Soper goes back into the race, and there is Bert Schneider, his windscreen wiper working as well. Yes, and we've got rain here now. I can tell you it is now raining by our commentary position as well. And this circuit is going to start to get very, very slippery indeed. And we may find that that gamble played by the Schnitzer BMW team, that early uh, stop for wet weather tyres, that long stop that he had, may have been the right thing to do. Did you see the leader there, the blue mirrored Mercedes of Alessandro Nanini having a big weave as he went across the now very slippery concrete, the car bouncing in showers of sparks. There's the Porsche following, that's Yannick Dalmas, windscreen wipers going for him too. And it's now when there's a little bit of rain on what is already a rubbery and oily track that this circuit is going to get very, very slippery indeed. Into the pits now comes Hans Stuck once more. He's decided it's time for the wet weather tyres, the groove tyres, as opposed to the slick, untreaded tyres they use in dry conditions. And the rain is really starting to tip down now. Umbrellas up, as you see. The pit lane is almost completely flooded. Car after car coming in for its tyre change. We've still got Alessandro Nanini in the lead. There he is. He's made his stop and he's looking smooth and comfortable out there in front. Peter Cox in second place in the Schnitzer McLaren. Bert Schneider has made his way up to third place in the Mercedes that was delayed right at the start. Greg Moore, his Mercedes teammate, is fourth. We've therefore got three Mercedes in the top four. And in fifth place, the gallant David Graben, who's having a wonderful drive in the Paynos ahead of Anders Olofsson's McLaren. There's the little Morgan you can see with one of its headlights on. Coming through after it, the leading Mercedes. Oh, and this is a spin, a replay of a spin. That's Hans Stuck's Porsche. So despite his change onto those wet weather tyres, he hasn't been able to keep it on the island. Now we ride with Claudia Hertgen once more, battling for those crucial GT2 points. She's got both the Eureka Vipers behind her. One of them goes by. That's Tommy Archer going by. Still Beretta right in her mirrors, weaving on these wet, slippery corners. She spun it. She spun it. And behind her, the other one spun as well. The Viper of Beretta spins in unison with Claudia Hertgen. She stalled the car. Can she get it going? Yes, she gets the engine to fire, and she's back in the race again, but that's put Tommy Archer comfortably ahead into the GT2 lead. Off goes a Mercedes, that's the leading car. That is Nanini, a trip across the grass, and Peter Cox is going to get him. Peter Cox right alongside and inside him for the right-hander. A change of lead, therefore. A little mistake from Alessandro Nanini. He just ran wide across the grass, and that was enough for Peter Cox to get a run down the inside. McLaren lead. Mercedes second, third, and fourth. And we see it again, just understeering wide as he comes to that right-hander, just as he goes onto that slick and slippery concrete, and he's on even more slippery grass. Somewhere underneath that car, there could well be a plastic motorway cone. Now we've got another spin. This is one of the golf cars. That's Thomas Bashir getting it extremely wrong and going through 360, no, 720 degrees, and a car coming to a wet and sodden halt in that flooded grass. The conditions here are absolutely dreadful and I'm surprised that they haven't brought out the safety car because as we watch the leader Peter Cox go on his way it's absolutely waterlogged and the real problem in a race like this where there is such a disparity of speed between the quickest GT1s and the slowest GT2s the real problem is traffic and visibility in the traffic there's the leader going past the Marcos with his high-speed windscreen wiper sweeping as much of the water as possible off his screen. Peter Cox, the Dutchman, still leads. Mercedes second, third and fourth. Alessandro Nanini holding on to that second place despite that off-course excursion. But the conditions are getting worse. It is raining harder. Oh, and there's Nanini. Nanini spun again. He's in the wall. He's pointing in the wrong direction. The yellow flags are waving. Can he get it started? Can he get it moving? No, the door comes open. Alessandro Nanini's race looks as though it's run. And you can see he's not, he's not at all happy about it. But meanwhile, one Mercedes out, another Mercedes battling for the lead because Bert Schneider is now up with Peter Cox. We've got a McLaren versus a Mercedes for the lead. Peter Cox in the Schnitzer McLaren leads. Bert Schneider in second place and on the attack on this treacherously slippery circuit. They're coming up now to where the yellow flags are waving. Uh, Peter Cox 
is about to approach where Nanini went off. He's got Schneider behind him, and Schneider, I think, is aware. Yes, he goes past the yellow flags. He hangs back. He's not trying to overtake now, because if you overtake under a yellow flag, you're in trouble. That means a certain penalty. This is the spin of Claudia Hertgen in perfect harmony with Olivier Beretta. But we're going to hear from Nanini's co-driver, Marcel Thiem. It looked quite good at the beginning. We had the lead uh, overall, and uh, so now I don't know. Uh, we have to wait. Well, he's out, but Mercedes still looking for victory. This is the Greg Moore car. Greg Moore's had an off, and they're cleaning the inside of the windscreen. Terrible visibility problems inside that car as Alexander Wurz takes over. Now, Schneider's got that lead. Schneider has passed Peter Cox. Headlights ablaze. Bernd Schneider, the championship challenger to JJ Leto and Steve Soper, now has the lead, and the rain continues to torrent down on what is now a completely waterlogged and very, very slippery circuit. Schneider, the leader, Peter Cox in the McLaren is in second place. In a wonderful third place, we've got David Brabham. He's driven all the way from the start in that paint Oz, which has tremendous cockpit temperatures. It must be very hot in there indeed, but David Brabham in third place. Fourth place, it's the Dams paint Oz, the French entered paint Oz. Frank Le Gorse at the wheel now. And Emmanuel Collard and Mauro Baldi, their Porsche GT1, is in fifth place. And Steve Soper, after all his problems, the delay on the very first corner of the race, the spin when he and Greg Moore tried to use the same piece of road, and then that disastrously long pit stop, couldn't start the car, and then they decided to make an early change onto wet weather tyres. Well, that wasn't a bad idea, and they have recovered. I say they, Steve Soper's still in the car, he started it, JJ Leto still in the pits waiting to take over, but that car is now recovered to 10th place. This is Claudia Hertgen once more, and she, on these slippery surfaces, is getting right up with the GT1 cars. She's uh, giving a little bit of embarrassment there to Thomas Bescher in the GT1 McLaren. They're catching up and lapping now the Marcos. They go past the Marcos, but Claudia Hertgen going deep into the corners behind the McLaren, getting very close to it. You see the McLaren move away from it as they go down the straight, but now they're coming into the corner. Claudia Hertgen goes by. Cheeky little GT2 Porsche. Frank Lagorce brings in the French dams entered Paynoz, and we've got the safety car out. SC and a yellow flag, that means the safety car is coming out. The weather is so dreadful here at Sebring that the safety car is now going to go out. The safety car will find the leader, will slot onto the circuit in front of it, and will then lead the entire field round in a slow-moving queue. Nobody is allowed to change their position. That's Raphael and Gounon in their McLaren. And look at the water that is lying on the circuit. And going motor racing in these conditions really isn't on. So the Sebring organizers, uh, not before time, it might be said, have brought out that safety car. There it is, and it is leading round. Bert Schneider with the rest of the field close up behind him. And for the time being, until the weather improves, the FIA Championship battle has to hold station. Welcome back to Florida. It's still pouring with rain here at Sebring. The safety car still leading the cars round. All of the debris from earlier accidents being removed by the marshals, and the track is still absolutely waterlogged. The race started in dry conditions, then it clouded over, and it's been raining torrentially for some time. All the crowd doing their best to remain cheerful, doing their best to keep dry, but it's still a pretty miserable scene here. Bernd Schneider, of course, the Mercedes driver, in the lead. He's sitting behind the pace car with the rest of the field queuing up behind him. And in that field, in second place, the Peter Cox, Roberto Revaglia, McLaren, third after a tremendous drive ever since the start of the race from David Brabham is the Brabham McCarthy Paynoz. In fourth and fifth places, the GT1 Porsches, Yannick Dalmas and Bob Wallach are fourth. Hans Stuck and Thierry Bootsen are fifth. And after what has been perhaps their most difficult race so far of this year, the championship leaders, Steve Soper and JJ Leto, have climbed back up to sixth place in that McLaren. Still Steve Soper at the wheel. He started the race. He's still in the cockpit. JJ Leto is going to take over to do the final stint. Two front-engine V8 cars there. The yellow one is the GT2 Marcos. Ahead of it, that white car is, of course, 
one of the two Dave Price Paynos cars, and this is the one that David Brabham has now got into third place. It's been a long and hard season for these Paynos cars. The engine is in the front, which means that the cockpit temperatures with the exhaust manifolds wrapping around the driver are horrendous. It's very difficult to stay at work at racing speeds inside that car for more than about an hour at a time. But David Brabham has that car in third place. Some of the teams have been asking for the race actually to be abandoned. There is uh, JJ Leto talking to Roberto Ravaglia. Neither of them have been out yet. They both look quite cheerful. But certainly JJ Leto doesn't want the race to be stopped. His car is only in sixth place now, and he wants to have the chance to move it up the order to get some more precious championship points. That's Claudia Hertgen, the very talented German girl, and she is challenging for the GT2 championship lead. She wants the race to be carrying on, and the lights are out on the safety car. The safety car is going to pull off at the end of this lap, and as they come onto the start-finish straight, do we have a green flag? We do. We have a green flag. And once more, the race is on, and leading that queue back into full race mode is Bernd Schneider, the silver Mercedes with the yellow mirrors. And isn't he the lucky boy? Because he is the only person with a completely clear road ahead of him. There's still a lot of standing water, and that means there's going to be spray. There are going to be visibility problems for the pursuing traffic. Battle there between the black Panos and the red GT1 Porsche. They're battling for eighth place, Lagos and Collard. But behind them is the Mercedes, the one with the red mirrors. That's the car that Greg Moore started the race in. It's now being driven by the hugely talented young Austrian Alexander Wurz. Now the leader coming down the long straight. On the tarmac comes, off the tarmac, onto the concrete. Oh, and he, he loses it. He leaves his braking much too late. He's back on the circuit again. But that is an indication, if we needed one, that Bernd Schneider is still pushing very, very hard indeed. And it's also an indication of just how difficult this unusual Sebring circuit is. Some of it is comparatively smooth tarmac. Some of it is very bumpy, rather old concrete, the residue of the old runways of the aerodrome. And there's Frank Lagos in the black uh, Dams Penos, the red and white GT1 Porsche following. Still the Mercedes behind, and that's a Porsche going off the circuit. That's Hans Stuck on the grass. And back onto the circuit again. Hans Stuck losing his way yet again. Bits of earth and Florida countryside dropping off the car and onto the circuit. Meanwhile, Alexander Burtz challenging Frank Lagortz now. Goes through on the inside of that right hand of the Mercedes making up time after its earlier delays. Burtz up to seventh place. Lagortz now eighth. Meanwhile, Peter Cox has handed over the second place McLaren to Roberto Rivaglia. Let's hear about the conditions from Dutchman Peter Cox. It's a little bit like uh, Silverstone again. You know, at the moment it's so dangerous and it's just a matter of luck if you stay on the track or not, you know. And I feel uh, at the moment it was still the wrong decision from the clerk of the course to take because I feel it is still very wet. And uh, I mean, this track is so unforgiving. I mean, it's a really nice track. It's a driver's track. But uh, you, all, you also should not look further than the track, you know. And uh, if you make a mistake or you aquaplane, the car is immediately gone. Then. That's Klaus Ludwig, ready to take over from Bernd Schneider. Mercedes have put their two most experienced drivers in the same car for this race. And that's Gounod, Jean-Marc Gounod, losing the Gulf McLaren, spinning, in fact, in front of Schneider there, but Schneider on his way. Jean-Marc Gounod getting the Gulf McLaren going once more. And how impressive Bernd Schneider has been in these difficult conditions. Despite that early delay, he was uh, off on the very first corner of the race in that incident with Steve Soper. And he's fighting the car. He's driving it absolutely on the limit. If you watch it, it doesn't look rock steady at all. This big 600 horsepower V12 Mercedes bumping over the concrete and twitching through the puddles. Bernd Schneider with the FIA Championship as his goal. Olofsson and Lees, there, McLaren in the pits, and off goes the Chamberlain Viper back onto the grass. It's still tremendously slippery here, but now we have the final stop for Bernd Schneider, that leading car, and he's got it in the pit lane now. Bernd Schneider brings the Mercedes, the leading car, into the pits. 
Klaus Ludwig is ready by the left-hand door. Out gets Schneider. In gets Klaus Ludwig, clambering into the seat of this left-hand drive Mercedes CLK Coupe. That's the Paynors, Perry McCarthy, waiting to take over the second place Paynors. Out into the race goes Klaus Ludwig. Ludwig on his way as David Brabham, after a stunning drive, a great, great drive from the Australian. Perry McCarthy ready, holding his seat to clamber aboard. They're refueling the car. Out rolls David Brabham. In goes Perry McCarthy with his seat. That's Don Paynors, the American patron of the Paynors team, talking to Dave Price, the team manager. And if they can keep this top three position with the Paynors, it will be such an achievement for the little American team up against the might of McLaren and Porsche and, of course, Mercedes. There is Klaus Ludwig all on his own, way out in front in the silver Mercedes, the number 11 car. But don't let's forget about J.J. Leto. J.J. Leto has taken over the McLaren from Steve Soper. He's storming up through the traffic. J.J. Leto is now fourth, a lap behind this leading Mercedes. It's Ravaglia and Cox in second place in their McLaren. The McCarthy, Brabham, Paynos is third. And there is J.J. now. J.J. absolutely storming through the traffic. J.J. the fastest car on the circuit at the moment. He's got a little GT1 Porsche to get round. He neatly slots on the inside of that. And the V12 BMW in the back of the McLaren singing it song JJ Leto in fourth place but he's gonna have to improve on that if he's going to retain the championship lead here at Sebring with only one race to go after this one remember there are the two Porsches of Bob Wallach and Thierry Bootsen the Hans Stock car running together in sixth and seventh places and considering all the problems that both of these works Porsches have had it's pretty good to see them running in the top eight and running both of them comparatively undamaged. There's our leader, Klaus Ludwig, in the Bernd Schneider Mercedes, still looking very comfortable at the head of the field. And we've got a plane flying upside down over the racetrack, doing aerobatics, in fact, which is uh, not what you normally expect to see over a busy motor race, and whether that complies with all the various uh, safety regulations of running an international motor race, I'm not quite sure. Two Paynors is battling together. That's the McCarthy car in third place, the Lagorce car in eighth. There is the Cox Ravaglia McLaren in second place, but in the GT2 championship battle, Claudia Hertgen's car has retired. Hertgen is out. That's good news for the Vipers, bad news for the Rook team. Let's hear from Fabian Rook. Uh, the oil temperature went up and uh, we had not the conversation over the radio. The driver was not sure what to do. And in a short time, in two laps, uh, the engine went up and blow up and that's it. Now the fastest man on the circuit at the moment is J.J. Leto in that McLaren, striving to make up time. Remember, he has had so many delays, but that car is now up into fourth place and catching the third-placed Paynors of Perry McCarthy hand over fist. So, on his way, J.J. Leto... There's fire! The car's on fire! That car is absolutely ablaze. Does J.J. Leto know he's driving on? He must know. Is he looking for a far point? The car is well and truly ablaze, and he must know that that car is on fire. He's now slow. He's now looking for a fire marshal. He's going straight to a fire marshal's point. Very quick thinking. The fire marshals are there. The car is well on fire. Where are the marshals? They're behind the barrier. Why don't those marshals get over the barrier and help JJ Leto? The car is burning. J.J. Leto is behind that, so he's gone to get the fire extinguisher. J.J. Leto is putting the fire out himself, and where, oh, where are the official fire marshals who are there? And J.J. Leto has snatched the fire extinguisher. He's putting the fire out himself. The official Sebring organizers are doing absolutely nothing. He's looking in the back of the... He's trying to get the fire extinguisher foam right at the back. The fire extinguisher's empty. Now he's gone to get another one. And still he's trying to put the fire out. Where is the official fire truck? Where are the fire marshals? J.J. Leto, the driver, doing everything that he can. Now, there is a fire truck with some rather slow-moving fire marshals. One of them is just putting on his fire uh, suit. But this is the most extraordinary demonstration of incompetence. J.J. Leto still trying to put the fire out on that car. No official fire men working at all. 
and JJ Leto now, he, look, he's trying to open the back to get at the engine where the fire is. He's peeling off the bodywork. It looks as though his, his hands are burnt. And now he's getting the fire extinguisher and still working on the car. And still there is no sign here at Sebring of any official fireman. He throws away the empty fire extinguisher in disgust and frustration. Finally, a fire truck arrives. But that is a disgrace, and the BMW Schnitzer team watching their television sets can barely believe the incompetence shown by the official organisers here at Sebring. And of course, Bernd Schneider now knows that that means, you can slow down, guys, that means that the championship is really moving his way. But words fail me to describe uh, how little action was taken by the organizers when JJ Leto with that car well and truly on fire drove it to a fire point and then had to use the fire marshal's fire extinguishers himself. That's Alex Wurz, the Mercedes with the red mirrors and he's going as quickly now as Klaus Ludwig is in the leading Mercedes although he's well down after earlier delays. Charlie Lamb on the right, the Schnitzer team boss, very sad I'm sure uh, about that extraordinary departure from the race of JJ Leto, but of course the other Schnitzer BMW McLaren is still there in second place, that's the Cox Revaglia car. Klaus Ludwig now, looking good, and there's the Beretta Gash GT2 Viper, the Viper's now first and second in GT2, the Justin Bell Tommy Archer car in second place in that class. And we've got Alex Burtz now coming up onto the tail of Klaus Ludwig. There they are, the red mirrors closing on the yellow mirrored car. And Klaus Ludwig, in fact, pulling very neatly out of the way to let Alex Wurz go all the way around him. That shows how confident uh, Klaus Ludwig is, because although Roberta Bravaglia is still in a strong second place, there he is there in the white McLaren, he is almost a lap behind. So it's Mercedes 1, it's McLaren 2, and of course it's Paynors 3, because Perry McCarthy has carried on the good work of David Brabham, humbling the Porsches, and there, Klaus Ludwig, content to follow Alex Wurz home because he knows he, with Bernd Schneider, is going to be the winner here at Sebring of a race which has been long and difficult and extremely wet. The check and flag waves. Alex Wurz goes through, actually, to finish seventh. And there, headlights ablaze, is the Mercedes of Klaus Ludwig rejoicing in the Mercedes pit. Bernd Schneider is there, but the big cheers are coming in the Paynor's pit. Paynor's finish third on their home ground. A GT Championship will go to the final race of the season. Here's confirmation of that result from Sebring in Florida. In first place, Bernd Schneider and Klaus Ludwig in their Mercedes. Peter Cox and Roberto Ravaglia second for the McLaren BMW team. And in third, finally getting things right for Paynor's, Perry McCarthy and David Brabham. And the boys are with me now. Perry, it all went right for you this time. Hey, it's a fantastic result. I mean, we're just absolutely delighted. It's, uh, we couldn't wish for more. Yeah. What was the difference here? We came third. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the major thing. We were competitive. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, it's, I'm lost for words, actually. It's uh, fantastic. David drove a, a brilliant first stint. Hopefully, I continue the good work, and uh, I think we've surprised a lot of people. So. David, how much does it mean to you after a, a long struggle this season? Well, it means a lot because at the beginning of the season, we didn't look very good. And uh, we've been building and on and on and on, and we've been getting much more competitive. But uh, this race, you know, with the rain and the dry and the rain and the dry, it really sort of suited our cars more than it has done before. And we just made the best of everything. The strategy was perfect. The guys did fantastic in the pits, and it just all came together. Perry did a great job just holding in there in third place. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of pressure on him, and he did a great job. OK, boys, well done. Congratulations. Thank Let's you. have a look at the championship standings. In the driver's table, Bernd Schneider's win gives him a slender three-point lead over Steve Soper and JJ Leto going into the final race. In the constructors' championship, Mercedes have a bigger advantage, 15 points, but they can still be caught by BMW. And these are the GT2 placings. Britain's Justin Bell, the leading driver from his Viper teammates, Gash and Beretta. No points this time for Hurtgen and Eichmann. So to catch Justin, they really need a win in California. The team championship is already decided. The Orica Vipers have sewn it up. So on the Sebring podium, the biggest cheers are reserved for Dave Price's Paynos boys. It's been a long, hard season, but they've finally got their hands on the champagne.
With so much still to be decided, that race at Laguna Seca promises to be a real thriller. Seca, the GT 